it's really time we talked about how much money you need for retirement based on your current age, don't you think so? Stick around till the end of today's conversation. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous if you're here to ask me. If you are doing as superb as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. In today's conversation, I want to have a, a precise chat with you about how much money you need for retirement based on your current age. It doesn't matter whether you're 25 or 55, you got to have a clear idea of what, how much you need to have in the bank account for your retirement. Let's first talk about how much should you really save each year for retirement. According to research, you want to aim for at least 15%. And if you want to be comfortable and be very, uh, I would say, uh, comfortable, go for 20%. So you want to aim to save at least 15% of your income annually for retirement, according to research. And how much you should save each year depend on, uh, depends on four key criteria. The first criterion is a yearly savings rate. Second criterion, a savings factor. Third criterion, an income replacement rate. And fourth criterion, a sustainable withdrawal rate. I'll just uh, I'll elaborate on those four criteria very uh, throughout the show, so don't uh, don't worry. And um, and we're showing you right now on the screen. You can see here, we've done a little bit of research, and we're showing you on right now how much you need to save for retirement based on your current age. So by age 25, you want to have one time your salary age 30 you need to have two times your salary age 40 you need to have three times your salary age 45 you need to have five times your salary your annual salary and this is pre-tax folks and by age 50 you need to have six times as much age 55 eight times as much age 60 nine times as much and age 67 you need to have 10 times your pre-tax salary and this is because as of the date of this show, the the legal requirement for the legal age for retirement in the United States is 67 years old. One thing I want to be very clear here is that it, it, your ability to save depends upon your lifestyle, depends upon the location where you want to retire, depends upon other criteria that are, I would say, um, unique to your situation so you might be thinking well i'm 30 years old and i need to have twice as much money in the bank account for retirement no probably you probably need three either three times or four times it depends upon your situation let's say you have uh you have four kids or five kids or you have uh you have a lot of expenses then you have to think about that all right let me give you a hypothetical example consider 24 year old software engineer sweetie kiwi <laughs> she earns sixty thousand dollars a year and we assume that her income grows 1.75% a year after inflation to about 100000 by the time she is 67 and ready to retire, right? So um, to maintain her pre-retirement lifestyle throughout retirement, we estimate that about 45000 each year adjusted for inflation or 45% of her, of her 100000 pre-retirement income needs to come from her savings, okay? Now, the remainder should actually come from uh, social security under our analysis so because she takes advantage of her employer's five percent dollar for dollar match on her on her 401k contributions she needs to save ten percent of her income each year starting with uh, six thousand dollars this year which gets her to 15 percent of her current income that's the calculus you have to think about so the big question is folks is 15% enough, right? It really depends. It depends on the choices you make before retirement. Most importantly, when you start saving and when you retire, this is something that we really have to think about. And any other income sources you may have, such as pension, should also be considered. It's all about personal situ your personal situation. So now that you have a savings rate to consider, here are some steps to think about that can help you get to it. 
So how do you set up your uh, retirement savings process? There are a few things you can do. First, you want to start early. You want to start as early as possible. The single most important thing that all experts agree on is to start saving early. The earlier you start, the more time you have for your retirement, for your investments to grow, right? And you can recover from the market's inevitable downturns. We all have the ups and downs of the market. Those are just inevitable. You cannot avoid them. And it's very important to take advantage of the magic of compounding. Okay, so if let's say if retirement is decades away, it may be hard to think or care about it. But when you are young is precisely the time you need to start saving for retirement, even though it can be a challenge to save for the future, given your savings, those extra years to grow could make the struggle worth it. Every little bit that you can save right now, folks, really helps. So we're showing you right now on the screen. Uh, there is a snapshot from a uh, fidelity and uh it really kind of illustrates the fact that the earlier you start to save, the lower your really savings rate needs to be. So if you start at 25, you just need to uh, save 15% of your pre-tax income, right? And if But if you start at 35, that percentage, that initial percentage jumps to 23%. So you can see the delta here, that the delta is uh, 8% simply because you started late. So you want to start as, as, uh, as early as possible. Another thing I want to talk about here is to you need to delay retirement. So the 15 percent savings rule of thumb assumes that a person retires at age 67, which is when most people will be eligible for a full Social Security benefits in the United States. But if you don't plan to work that long, you will likely need to save more than 15 percent a year. And the cool thing here is that if you plan to work longer, all things being equal, your required savings rate could be lower. So this is something you have to think about. You also have to think about using all retirement tools to your advantage. The, uh, there is a constellation of uh, retirement tools available out there that you can use. Let me, let me give you uh, an example. First, you, have, uh, you want to make the most of tax advantage savings accounts like, like traditional 401ks and IRAs, right? IRA stands for individual retirement accounts. So your contributions are made before tax, reducing your current taxable income, meaning you get a tax break the year you contribute. Plus that money can grow tax-free until you withdraw it in retirement when it will be taxed as your as your ordinary income. With the Roth 401ks and IRAs, your contributions are after tax, but you can withdraw the money tax-free in retirement, assuming certain conditions are met, right? And uh, if you have, let's say, uh, if you have a, a high deductible health plan eligible for a health savings account, you want to consider contributing to an HSA to cover current and future health care expenses. And um, one thing I want to remind you is that HSA contributions are pre-tax and tax deductible. In addition, when you use money saved in an HSA on qualified medical expenses now or in retirement, the withdrawals of contributions and any investment returns are always tax-free. You always you also want to max and match. If you have a if you have room to up to to up your 401k and IRA contributions before you hit the relevant annual contribution limit, listen. Right now, I suggest that you increase your automatic contributions as much as possible. At the very least, you want to take advantage of your company match if you have one. Because if you really think about it, that's effectively free money, right? You also want to catch up. So if you are, let's say you are 50 or older, be sure to make, to make the, uh, the most of catch up contributions to your retirement savings plans. You also want to think constantly thinking about sizing up your portfolio. Because as I said earlier, market movements can shift your investment mix. So too much in stocks can increase your risk of loss. Too, too little can undermine growth potential. So you want to aim to have a diversified mix of investments. So at least once a year, and some people do it twice a year, but at least once a year, you want to take a look at your investments and uh, making sure you have the right amount of stocks, bonds, and cash to stay on track to meet your long-term goals, risk tolerance, and time horizon. And one thing I also want to say, and this is, this is uh, you want to make savings a priority, okay? The 15% I, I talked about is kind of cool, but if you can do more, please do. And also, don't don't hesitate to uh, hire professionals. You want to consider your investing style 
And um, if um, if investing is not your forte, reach out to a financial advisor. Reach out to a, a brokerage firm that has a robo advisor. All right, you constantly want to get the expertise you need to grow your money. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are still having a conversation about how much money you need for your retirement based on your current age. And uh, I want to talk to you now about how much money you need to retire. Like, this is not a theoretical question, really, because this, is, this really hits home. It really depends. The money you need to retire comfortably depends on the timing of your retirement as well as your desired lifestyle during retirement. I'm going to repeat that this is very important. The amount of money you need to retire depends on the the timing of your retirement, when you retire, and your desired lifestyle during retirement, how you want to live in retirement. So let's first talk about when you plan to retire. So the age you plan to retire can have a big impact on the amount you need to save and your milestones along the way. And the longer you can postpone retirement, the, lo the lower your savings factor can be. That's because delaying gives your savings a longer time to grow so you'll have fewer years in retirement and your social security benefits will be higher. And so you want to, let me just give you a few hypothetical examples. You know, Alex plans to delay retirement until age 70. So he will need to have uh, saved eight times his final income to sustain his pre-retirement lifestyle. Maria, on the other hand, wants to retire at age 67. So she will need to save maybe uh, 10 times her, re her pre-retirement income. And Malik plans to retire at age 65, so he will need to have at least 12 times his pre-retirement income. So you can see here, we, we went from 8 times to 10 times to 12 times. Of course, you, can, you can't always choose when you retire, right? Because health and job availability may be out of your control. But one thing is clear, folks. Working longer will make it easier to reach your saving goals. And how much, and so that's the first option. First option when you plan to retire. The second option, how you want to live in retirement. So in other words, do you expect your expenses to go down when you retire? We call that a below average lifestyle or you, or will you spend as much as you do now? That's average. So if you expect your expenses will be more than they are now, that's above average. So you have the, the trifecta, right? The average, below average, and above average. So let's look at some hypothetical investors who are planning to retire at 67. So Aisha is planning to downsize and live frugally in retirement. So she expects her expenses to be lower and her savings factor might be closer to eight times than 10 times. And Peter is planning to retire at age 67 and his goal is to maintain his lifestyle in retirement. So his savings factor is about 10 times. And Juanita sees retirement as an opportunity to travel extensively, so it may it might make sense for her to save more and plan for a higher level of retirement spending. So her savings factor is 12 times at age 67. So the big question is, and I've said this before, how do you catch up if you are way behind your retirement savings? There are a couple of things you can do. And no panic here, folks. It is possible to catch up. It is uh, it is possible. First, you want to fully fund your 401k. So if you are an employee in this age category who is offered a 401k at work, you want to consider funding it to the maximum amount to provide you with a sense of how powerful um, maxing out a 401k can be. Consider the following. An individual who is 40 years old and who contributes $17,500 annually to a 401k could accumulate more than $1.3 million in savings by age 65. Think about that. So this assumes an 8% return and no employer contributions. So that's pretty cool. Now, that's that's a powerful savings, savings strategy here, right? Think about that. Now, if this individual that I'm just talking to you about increases savings by a catch-up amount of 5500 at age 50, this will lead to an additional 271000 in savings. That's, that's more than a quarter of a million, folks. 
So note that the total allowed of cash of contribution is uh, $6,500 per, per year for 2020 and 2021. This amount changes all the time, but it is still significant. And so we're showing you right now um, a snapshot that we took from, that we actually took uh, courtesy of Investopedia. We're showing this to you right now on the screen. And you can see the, the great calculation that our friends at Investopedia did and uh, the accumulated savings from uh, at age 40 all the way to age 65. That's brilliant, you can see. And, and uh, their hypothetical uh, example here takes 8% as um, annual ROI. And you can see how the money grows. Again, the source here is Investopedia. So, so you can fully fund your 401k if you want to catch up. You can also contribute to a Roth IRA. That's pretty cool also. You can also consider home equity. So, I mean, a home should not usually be considered a primary source of retirement income, but it really can provide liquidity during retirement. So you can actually, uh, if you're an older individual, you might consider borrowing against the equity in your home in order to fund living expenses. So a large portion of the population has most of their wealth tied up in real estate properties, according to research, right? So you can use, if you are in that situation, you can use that equity in many ways to fund retirement. You can use a home equity line of credit, a HELOC, to draw from, uh, to draw from when needed, or you could actually sell downsize and leave off the equity and you can also consider something called a reverse mortgage a reverse mortgage may make sense because lending institutions may shorten repayment periods and increase repayment amounts for older borrowers so selling a primary residence outright and moving to a smaller and less costly home may also make sense for older individuals so in all cases it's all about you it's all it's all about what works for you To actually also catch up if you are way behind on your your retirement savings, you can also think about taking deductions. So it's it's really important to explain something here. Standard deductions are not for everyone. In fact, if you have a large amount of mortgage interest, deductible taxes, business related expenses that weren't reimbursed by your company and or charitable contributions, it probably makes sense to itemize your deductions. So you want to probably talk to a CPA or an EA, an enrolled agent, who can explain to you the constellation of options you have. You can also tap into cash value policies. So while tapping an insurance policy for its cash should be considered a last resort, if the original need for the insurance is no longer there, it may make sense to cash out, right? However, before even canceling any policy or accessing its cash value, you want to first consult with a tax advisor and an insurance professional to review your individual needs. Another option that we have thought in our research that could help you if you are trying to play catch up on your retirement uh, savings is to get disability coverage, right? Please do not forget to either obtain a disability coverage policy or make certain that your job offers some sort of a group disability benefit because the idea behind obtaining such a such a coverage policy is simple you want to protect yourself and at least a portion of your income and next egg just in case the worst should happen we know that life happens the stuff happens you can't you can't predict those things so you the only thing you can do is cover yourself cover your back so your ch your chances of becoming disabled depend on your career and your lifestyle but according to uh, data released by the United States Census Bureau in 2020, approximately 40 million Americans report some level of disability. Think about it. 40 million. That's a significant number, folks. You're talking here about 12 to 13 percent of the U.S. civilian non-institutionalized population, according to the report. It means that in order to protect your income and improve your chances of um, your chances of uh, coverage, when you retire, it may make sense to at least consider some form of disability coverage. All right. So this is very important to think about. All right, folks, this is the end of today's conversation. I really want to uh, draw your attention once again to the table that I showed you at the beginning of the, of the show. How much to save for retirement based on your current age, whether you are 25 or all the way to 67 
we we are really want to uh, want you to the, the big takeaway of this show is the multiple that you need to the mul- the amount that you need to save and how much you should multiply your pre-tax income right now based on your current age and one thing i also want to say here is that aim to save at least 15 percent of your pre-tax income each year for retirement all right your personal target rate your personal target savings rate may vary depending on a variety of factors including when you plan to retire your retirement lifestyle when you started saving and most importantly how much you have already saved okay and so i spoke to you about how much you should save each year for retirement how to set up your retirement savings process how much money do you need to retire and how you can catch up if you are way behind on retirement savings thank you so much for your attention i really appreciate it i will see you next time but until then remember stay marvelous (laughs) 